Hey everyone, this is the video for assignment six in chapter one. Um, and it deals with all kinds of basic stuff, most of which you'll probably know, and some things that you might have known and forgotten, and maybe some things you haven't learned at all. But we're going to talk about a bunch of these things right now, and the focus is lines. So. I want to start our discussion with, about lines by talking about something called increments. Increments. We often think of differential calculus or first semester calculus as being a study of incremental change. So we need to know what increments are. And so increments are the changes in x and y coordinates from one point to another. Now for a lot of people that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean they read the words but they don't know what it means. So let's let's look at a situation. Okay, we've got a point here, x1, y1. And we've got a point here, x2, y2. And we want to talk about the change from one point to another. So this would be delta x, or the x increment. I'm going to put that right here. x increment is this distance here, this change in x values, as we go from x sub 1 to x sub 2. And this distance here, this change from this y value to this y value, which we call delta y, is the y increment. Now, this delta means change in, change in x's, and this delta y means change in y's. So, have we seen this before? Well, yeah, I think we have seen it before. But before we you know, reveal that, um, why don't you find the x and y increments from negative 6, 3, 2, 4, 3. Okay, so we know the x increment is the change in x values. Change in x values. So we're going to have 4 minus minus 6. And the y increment is the change in y values. And so what I see is there's no change in y values, but there's a lot of change in x values here. My x increment is 10 and my y increment is 0. Where have we seen increments before? Well, slope formula. The slope formula is the y increment over the x increment. Slope is the change in y values with respect to the change in x values. So we can say slope is a ratio of increments. And we'll be talking a lot about slope this year. Okay, now, slope. If I have the point negative 1, 2, and the point 3, 2. What's my slope? So 2 minus 2 over 3 minus a minus 1 is 0 over 4, or 0 divided by 4. There are 0 pizzas sitting on the dining room table. Four people come over for dinner. How much pizza does each of them get? No pizza. What does the slope of zero look like? Well, I know 
that a slope of zero looks like a horizontal line. Okay. What happens if we have instead these ordered pairs? Negative one, two, and negative one, six. What's my slope going to be here? Six minus two over negative one minus a minus one, four over zero. There are four pizzas sitting on the dining room table and no one comes over to eat them. How much pizza does each person get? Well, that's undefined, okay? It's undefined. Or, in this situation, we know what's going on by looking at the graph. We can see negative 1, 2, negative 1, 6. We see a vertical line. And a vertical line with its undefined slope you could make an argument for that's an infinite slope. Um, but I think as long as we know that this is undefined and that means a vertical line, we'll be happy. We actually use slope and lines a whole lot this year. Um, no chapter will go by when we're not addressing it. All right, next. Rate of change. In fact, I want to call it average rate of change. Average rate of change, as we said last year, is slope with units. So if I have um, at time equal to zero, uh, 14 donuts, and at time equal to five minutes, I have nine donuts. I'd like to know the average rate of change in donuts. Nine minus 14 over five minus zero. And I get negative five over five or negative one. Now remember, we're talking about average rate of change here. And that means I need to have some units. Up top, these are our outputs. Those units are do nuts. Sorry, this is the commercial spelling, and that's the real spelling. And on the bottom, we have minutes. So when I look at this negative one, it's negative one donut per minute. Now, what does that mean? It means the donuts are disappearing at a rate of one donut per minute. Disappearing, going away, reducing. The rate at which donuts are being eaten is one donut per minute. I hope it's a bunch of us and not one person. Okay, so average rate of change is simply slope with units. Great. Next. I want to talk about the equations of lines. We build the equation of a line with y equals mx plus b, or y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Now, my guess is most of you prefer this slope-intercept form. But I think after today, you should only be using point slope form, okay? And I have a reason for that. But I'm going to first finish off by saying we build the lines with these, and we display the equation of a line using slope-intercept form, which is why many of you like it, because you can build the line and display it simultaneously, or standard form. That's standard and this is slope intercept again. Okay, with standard form we notice the x's and y's are on the same side. And if you run into an old school teacher, 
these can't be fractions, so you'd have to multiply through by a common denominator to clear out all the fractions. Okay, so let's go back to talking about building a line and how I always want to use point-slope form. So, how about we have two ordered pairs, negative 2, 1, and 3, 4, and we want to build the equation of the line. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is find the slope. 4 minus 1 over 3 minus a minus 2. I have 3 over 5 as my slope. And now, if I'm using y equals mx plus b, I'm going to plug that slope in, but I still need to find my b value. I'm sure you all know that we plug in either of these ordered pairs for x and y. Please make sure this goes in here and this goes in here because I see a lot of students taking this and plugging it in here because the first variable gets the first number. Yeah, that's not true. Remember, this is x and this is y. So I'm going to plug in a 4 here, 3 fifths times 3 plus b. I get 4 equals 9 fifths plus b. And then I still have to subtract 9 fifths from both sides. 4 minus 9 fifths and that means 20 fifths minus 9 fifths is 11 fifths for our b value. And finally, I can write the equation of the line as y equals 3 fifths x plus 11 fifths. Okay, that's me writing with slope-intercept slope form. And you're welcome to do that. However, this part here about finding b if you make a subtraction mistake, you don't get the answer point when you do this problem on the AP exam. And that would be a shame to lose, you know, one of your precious points on the exam simply because you were, uh, you know, wanting to use slope-intercept form. Um, instead, I want to recommend point-slope form. It says I need a point and a slope to make this form work. And we already found the slope. We said 4 minus 1 over 3 minus a minus 2 was 3 over 5. So I'm going to use that slope and the same point. And here we go. y minus 4 equals 3 fifths x minus 3. Now, remember how I said I like using point slope form? Here's why. I'm done. That's the equation of the line. I don't have to simplify it on the AP exam. In fact, if I simplify this and get it into y equals form and I make a distributing mistake or I make an adding mistake, I lose the answer point. And because of that, and because this class isn't called calculus, it's called AP calculus, which means we're getting ready for the AP exam, that means I want to make sure you maximize your points. And so one way to maximize points is use point slope form and don't go any further. Stop. This gets the answer point. You don't have to take this further. Okay, I mean, you're welcome to, and you'll end up, we found out, with y equals 3 fifths x plus minus 9 fifths plus 20 fifths is 11 fifths. You can do that. I just don't recommend it, because if you make a mistake in distributing or make a mistake adding that 4 to both sides, you're not going to get the point. So my first piece of calculus -y advice to you uh, is use point-slope form when writing the equation of a line. And since we're going to write equations of lines in every chapter this year, um, you'll have lots of opportunity to embrace this. The second piece of advice I have for you is, see this green box? Yeah, don't ever do that. Don't ever box your answer. Don't. You box your answer, and you've got a mistake in it. I can't give you the credit. So let's say that you um, add y equals 3 fifths x. Oh, let's do it this way. y minus 4 equals 3 fifths x minus 3. And then you head over here, y equals 3 fifths x plus 10 fifths, and you box this in. Well, I can't give you the answer point now, because you made an adding mistake. But, if you leave this, 
This is vague enough for me to say, well, I see the correct answer here. And because I see the correct answer, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe when I see the correct answer as an AP reader reading your exam, I stop here and I award you the credit. In the worst case scenario, we average the scores because we think, oh, parallel solutions. They did one problem and then they did another problem. So really, it's to your advantage not to box things in. Don't box. Don't box, he says, boxing, don't box. Don't box. Don't box and use point slope form. The other thing I need to remind you of is we need to write sentences. We're going to spend a lot of time in chapters four, five, seven, writing lots of explanations in our class. I've had students say, Mr. Kukla, I write more in this class than I do in government and as much as I do in English. So in part, that's because we're going to write a sentence now. We're not going to draw a box. We're going to write a sentence. The equation of the line through, I forget what those points were, I believe it was negative two, negative one, and three, four, is y minus four equals three-fifths x minus three. Notice sentence. We write a sentence. We're going to write a sentence now, always. So whenever you do a homework problem, there needs to be a sentence as your answer. I need a sentence. You don't give me a sentence, I give you a check minus. I give you half credit on the homework because you're not writing sentences. No, really, you need to write sentences. Lazy people, you need to write sentences, okay? You want a four or five on the AP exam? You do what I tell you. You need to write sentences. Write sentences. If the homework doesn't have sentences, it's going to be half credit already before I start grading it. Even something like, hey, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. That's a sentence. I'm not going to write this as my answer. I'm going to say is 1 half. I'm going to get in the habit of writing sentences. We're going to write sentences with every homework problem from now on. So please, write a sentence. Okay, next, I want to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Do you remember about the slopes of parallel lines? Slopes of parallel lines in our Euclidean universe are equal because in Euclidean space, parallel lines never intersect, so they have the same slope. It's true, in non-Euclidean space, parallel lines can intersect. And if you want to know more about that, either ask me or Google it. Okay, so we know the slopes of parallel lines are equal, and what about the slopes of perpendicular lines? Well, hopefully you remember that they are opposite reciprocals. So if the slope of the line is 2 thirds, the slope of the line parallel is also 2 thirds, but the slope of the line perpendicular, we want opposite, so we change the sign, and we want the reciprocal. Okay? Or if we know that the slope of the line is 4, I'm sorry, negative 4, the slope of the parallel line would be negative 4, but the perpendicular line, positive 1 fourth. Okay? All right. So, with that in mind, write the equation of the line 
parallel to the line through negative 2, negative 1, 3, 4, that passes through that passes through 1, negative 2. Okay, so what do I need to do here? I'm trying to write the equation of a line that is parallel to another line. That other line is the one that passes through these points. And yet this parallel line has to go through 1, negative 2. Maybe it would help if I visualize this by graphing. Negative 2, negative 1. Here's 3, 4. We've got this line connecting them. And I want a line that's parallel to this, but that passes through 1, negative 2. So I'm trying to write the equation of the red line. What information do I need? Well, in order to write the equation of a line, I need two things. I need a point, and they gave me that point, but I also need a slope. So, how can I find a slope? Well, because I'm looking for the line parallel to this one, I need the slope of this line. If I can find the slope of this line, then this parallel line will have the same slope. So, I think we know this slope already. Let's just check. 4 minus a minus 1 over 3 minus a minus 2. And I get 5 over 5. Ooh, a slope of 1. So here I have a slope of 1, and therefore here I have a slope of 1. So slope of 1 and this point, let's write the equation of the line. y minus a negative 2 equals 1 x minus 1 and I'm stopping. That's done. Don't go any further. That's the equation of the line parallel to. Don't distribute. Don't combine those. Stop. Because if you make a mistake distributing or turning this into positive and then moving it to the other side, you're going to lose the answer point. Now, I will tell you this is called AP calculus. And it's called AP calculus because this sort of shenanigans works fine, is a, is a success strategy even on the AP exam. But when you go to college and you stop here, your professor will probably make a sad face and not give you all the points because she expects you to give her that with a box. No box this year. No box. Don't simplify, okay? All right. So what about through those same points? We draw the, uh, we want the equation of the line perpendicular to the one that passes through these points that goes through one, negative two. Well, we know perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. The slope of this line, 4 minus a minus 1 over 3 minus a minus 2 is still 1. And it may be useful for us to take a look at this again. Here was our 3, 4. Here was our negative 2, negative 1. And I want something that passes through this point 1, negative 2, that is perpendicular, perpendicular to this line. We actually write a, a, a good deal of uh, parallel line and perpendicular line equations this year, uh, and I'll say more about that in a moment. So what I need is to know the slope of the original line. The slope is 1 over 1, and so when I flip that and change the sign, the slope of the perpendicular line would be negative 1 over 1. So using a slope of negative 1 and this point, I write y minus a minus 2 equals negative 1 x minus 1. And I stop. Again, you can go further. You can turn this into negative x 
plus 1 minus 2 is minus 1. But I'm not going to. I'm going to stop here. And I'm not going to box it. I'm just going to have it here. As soon as the reader sees the correct answer, they stop reading and move on. Okay? Um, so, there are two words that are going to pop up uh, a lot this year. Those are tangent, lines, and normal lines. So, if I have a curve and a point on that curve, this line that touches the curve at just that point, this is called the point of tangency, and this is a tangent line. Now, if we had a line that touched the curve in two points, and we don't see this very often, but it does come up in chapter two. This is called a secant line, okay? I think there's one problem we're going to be seeing where they want the tangent line and the secant line to have the same slope. Um, but we won't see a lot of secant lines. We will, however, see normal lines. And normal lines are Normal lines are perpendicular to tangent lines. We often talk about the normal to the curve. The normal to the curve goes through the point of tangency and is perpendicular to the tangent. That might be new for you. Okay, so tangent line touches once just at the point of tangency. And I'll go further. Not only does the tangent line and the curve share that point, but at the point of tangency, the curve and the tangent line have the same slope. And that's going to be very important for us this year. At the point of tangency, the ordered pair is the same and the slope is the same between the curve and the tangent line. The normal line is always perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. Okay, so we've reviewed a bunch of stuff. And I still want to do one more thing, and that has to do with uh, writing the equations of lines, nah, regression lines. I need to use the regression feature on my calculator to uh, come up with this regression line. So I have some data here, some timely data. Um, I've got days since uh, May 25th, and here I have number of people infected daily, okay? These are Arizona infections. So, uh, since May 25th, well, on the 25th, so that's time equals zero because it's no days past, May 25th, 222 people were, were diagnosed, were tested positive for COVID, uh, and that's 525. On 527, two days later, that number was 479. Now that's not total people infected. On this day, this many people tested positive for COVID. On 529, which would be day four, 702 people in Arizona tested positive for COVID. On 6-2, which I believe is day eight, 1,127 people tested positive. On 6-7, which is uh, day 13, there were 1,438 people who tested positive for COVID. Um, these aren't totals. It's not a total after the 13 days this many people have it. It's on that day this many people tested positive. And it doesn't include this number. This is 1,438 new people who weren't infected got infected that day. Okay. So what I'd like to do 
is to build the equation of the line of best fit using linear regression on our calculator. So let's go back and review linear regression. Okay, so we turn our calculator on, and you can't see this, so how about the light? That helps a little. And we'll put this over here. Uh, I want to be able to see the numbers. Oh no! Okay, I'm going to put it on top of the numbers and use my paper list of numbers over here. Okay, so uh, we go to STAT. When you want to do a regression equation, you go to STAT and then edit. And if you have stuff in list one and list two, you can go up arrow onto the list name, hit clear. And when you're done waiting for nothing to happen, you've got to remember to hit enter. <laughs> so it's up arrow, clear, and if you don't hit enter, nothing happens, and then hit enter. In list one, I'm going to type the days, 0, 2, 4, 8, 13. And in list two, I'm going to type the number of daily infections. Okay, I always like to make sure that I have the same number of things in both lists. If I don't and I try and graph this, it gives me an error. And so, yeah, uh, when, when I get an error, it's probably because I have a different number of things in each list. And I just want to check over those values to make sure I typed them in correctly. Uh, yep. And so regression equations are really useful for real-world data, like our Arizona infection data. Now, I'd like to see this data as a scatter plot. And you may remember, if we go to y equals and we go to up arrow to turn plots on, we can hit enter. I don't need this equation in here, so I'm going to get rid of that. So I've turned my plot on. So up arrow, hit enter to make sure that's highlighted. Okay. That's the first thing I needed to do to get a scatter plot. The second thing is to press the zoom button, and then I want to go until I see zoom stat, which is number nine. Number nine, zoom stat, and hit enter. That builds me the perfect viewing window for seeing this data. Now, that looks pretty linear to me, and so it makes sense that I might want to uh, build a linear regression model for this. Okay, so to do that, we go back to stat, but this time, instead of edit, we want calculate. Stat, calculate. And what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate a linear regression. I can't see it, so there it is, linear regression, ax plus b. Okay, hit enter. Now, on new calculators, you don't have to do what I have to do on my old calculator. On the old TI-83s and some older TI-84s, I now want to say list 1, comma, list 2, list 1, comma, list 2, comma, the comma is above the 7, and then I want to store this regression in Y1. Where does y1 live again? It lives under variables, y variables, function y variables, and there it is. So what I've told my calculator here is we're using list one and list two to do a linear regression and we're gonna store the answer in y1. I believe the new calculators, it looks uh, like you've got list one over here and list two over here and then uh, it says something like store regression equation. And you say y1 over here, and then it doesn't work until you say calculate, which I believe is a gray thing. When you say calculate, and then it comes up with the regression equation. Okay? Uh, if you're not sure about this, I can show you in uh, class Zoom how to do it. Okay, so here's ours. I hit enter. I get my regression equation, ew, but I want to see the graph of it. And the nice thing about typing it in as lin reg ax plus b l1 l2 
y1 is that this automatically takes all of that and puts it there. And so now I can graph and see my line of best fit. Wow, that's pretty close to the data. So we have this line of best fit now, and what do we do with it? Well, so this is a model that we've built for daily infections, and it's 93.738.8059 x plus 287.4104477. There's my model. And the input is days since May 25th, and the output is the daily infections. How many people are infected daily, okay, in Arizona? So let's ask some questions, like when will the daily infection number be 4,682? Yes, that's right. Almost 5,000 people tested positive in one day. So how can we do that? Is this an input or an output? Well, it's a number of people infected. So when I have an output, what I like to do is graph that output line. So 4682 graph. And now I can, oh, I don't see a point of intersection. Why not? Well, I don't have a good viewing window. Remember, my viewing window stops at 1400. So let's change this. We need more x's. Let's go 50 days in steps of five. And we need more y's. Let's go to 6,000 in steps of 500. So there's our line of best fit. And look, there is a place on our line of best fit. Second, calculate, intersect. Is this the first curve? Yes. Is this the second curve? Yes. Do you want to guess? No, I do not want to guess. And it tells me that the point of intersection is located 46.881. Remember, we round to three places in our class. That's the expectation for AP Calculus. If you round to two places, they don't give you the answer point. So please make sure you round to three places unless specifically told otherwise. So 46 days after May 25th. Okay, so what is 46 days after May 25th? Well, we know that there are uh, six days left in May plus 30 days in June, so that's 36 of our 46, which means 10 Ju uh, July 10th, okay? So I'm gonna pull up the data um, to see when we actually got there. Um, because there really was this day when that many people were infected. Um, There it is, June 30th. So we didn't keep going up at the same rate, another 93 people each day. Instead, the rate of change got faster because instead of reaching this many people infected, 4682, on 710, like our model predicts, we actually surpassed that number on June 30th. Yeah, this thing started spreading like crazy when people started going back to restaurants and bars. Please don't do that. Please wear a mask. I'd like to get through this. Okay, and the last question I want to know is what will be the daily infection, infected number on August 10th, as we start school again. 
Well, if this model continues, then, you know, I, I see that we're already higher than this model, but if this model were to continue, and we took it all the way out to August 10, which by the way is day 77, 77 days after May 25th, um, what would that number be? And so my question is, how do I find this? Now I'm given an input. I'm given an input of 77. Well, I don't really want to type in that 77 here for x. Oops. I don't want to type in that 77 here for x and then multiply and then have to add all this decimal stuff. I'm going to go over to my table feature and just type in a 77. And I see that if this trend continues, 7,505.2985 or 299 people will be infected on that day if this trend continues. I like to think that we wise up and start wearing masks and stop spreading this virus around that's out there. Uh, and so we won't see this many people infected in one day. But I don't know. We could have a lot of stupid people. Uh, as of today, uh, which is July 13th, in Arizona, there are 109,000 people who have tested positive and 11,000 people in Pima County who have tested positive. Please be safe. Okay, more applicable math soon. So that was our first video. I hope it was helpful. There is a homework assignment here for this. It's uh, assignment six, and SWAR stands for students will actively read. Yes, I know you won't, but I can dream. And then do these pages. And Mr. Kuka, how am I supposed to do these pages? No worries, I'm gonna scan all these pages. There'll be a little PDF in the folder in Office 365 for chapter one, where you can pull this up the assignment calendar will be there, but also the scan of this, as well as any other worksheets we have. So all is there waiting for you. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye.